Now, here's Michael Smirkanish. Calling all fans of the West Wing, you are going to love a new book. A new book co-authored by Mary McCormick, Commander Kate Harper, if you will, who served as the Bartlett administration's sly and wry deputy national security advisor from season five through the series finale. And Melissa Fitzgerald, who for the entire seven season run of the West Wing played C.J. Craig's ever present, ever buoyant and dutiful assistant, Carol Fitzpatrick. The book is called What's Next? A Backstage Pass to the West Wing, its cast and crew and its enduring legacy of service. And both Melissa Fitzgerald and Mary McCormick join me now. It's a beautifully presented book. Can I say as one who has written a few of my own, but interviews (laughs) countless authors, it's got heft. It's fun to read. I love the structure. It's just really, really well done. So congratulations to both of you. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice to hear. Mary McCormick, first thing I want to say is, hey, now. And the second thing that I want to say is, does Aaron Sorkin speak like that in real life? (laughs) I don't think so, does he? But but, a little bit, a little bit. I think a little bit when we interviewed him. Yeah, quick, brilliant, yes, succinct. For sure, he's brilliant. Yeah, it was fun interviewing all the writers because yeah. they they spoke so beautifully. <laughs> but Aaron does talk about his yeah. writing. It, you know, there's a, a lot of actors have all spoken about how you don't change any of Aaron's words on the set. Unlike some shows that you go on, you can sort of naturalize things or add an I mean or a maybe or Aaron's work. You don't do that and it's not really done. But he... He spoke about that recently. He said, Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think it's because I think I'm so great or my words can't be, you know, bettered. Or he said, it's not that I just hear it musically. He said, I hear dialogue like as if it were scored musically. And if you change one word, the music is different. And I do, I do understand that. I, absolutely. It, his writing. And I, and I think Dulé talked about it too. He said, once I figured that out, he said it made all the sense in the world. And we actually had on set, you know, and on other shows, you have a script supervisor who's in charge of continuity. And we had additionally somebody whose only job was to make sure everybody was letter perfect. I can, I can only imagine how intimidating it would have to be to deliver those lines for him as written. I, I got to get to this. I said it's I said it's a fun book. I said that I really love just turning the pages of it. Aww. Among the inserts, is this true? I mean, God, it looks true. To whom it may concern the West Wing additional ideas for POTUS as of February 18, 1999. Are you telling me that Robert Bork are you telling me that Johnny Carson, James Carville, Walter Cronkite, Bob Dole, Danny Glover, Andy Griffith, yeah. uh, Kenny Rogers, Kenny yeah. Rogers, and Norman Schwarzkopf all yeah. were at least bandied about as potential Correct. President Bartlett's? Correct. And there, we yeah. we have access to, to, thanks to the great John Levy, who was the casting director of the show, he gave us access to all of the casting folders, which were it was dense. It was a lot of material. There were more lists, POTUS lists, which and I would have loved to have included. George Steinbrenner. I mean, it was it, Steinbrenner. It, it, are you kidding? They're completely crazy. They're like, bonkers. But we had, I mean, we, had, we he gave us the books, which was like the great thing about being part of the show and writing this book is the access that we had to inside information like that. So what's the deal? Because the early notes also reference the fact that Mary McCormick is not really interested in series work. Can you believe it? I mean, I was flipping through those casting folders, like right? laughing at the list, like you, yeah. like going like, what? This, someone must have been high, like yeah. I'm just completely <laughs> enjoying it. And then I see my name and that's what I see. Like but, an idiot. It's so you, me. But you have to remember at that time, people who were doing films were not doing television. It was a completely, it was 25 years ago. It was a different time. Now the crossover, of course, happens all the time. But then it wasn't happening. So you weren't so bonkers, Mary. <laughs> so Mar- Mary, you you perhaps were always interested, but you weren't initially there. What was your path to West Wing? So I was doing, uh, I did... A, a recurring part on ER, which John Wells produced, and John Wells also produced The West Wing. And he asked me to, after I did this sort of arc, he said, will you come join ER on a permanent basis? And I couldn't because I was in Washington, D.C. doing a different political show called K Street, um, actually with George Clooney and Soderbergh. And so then he said, when that finished, he said, 
okay, uh, how about the West Wing? And I was, it timed out perfectly. And I, I mean, that was a great yeah. call to get. Luckily, I had worked with John before. So he invited me to come on. He said, I think national security. And I was like, sounds good. And then I had to come clean because I was pregnant and <laughs> I showed up pregnant. But well, I, I, no, I found that very interesting, just how accommodating everyone at West Wing was to yeah. your pregnancy. They yeah. rolled with it. They're like, that's OK. We got lots of kids on the set. Yeah, he said, John Well said, we're a family show. We'll just hide it. He, yeah. he didn't think twice, which and was so nice. It was a big relief. And several Melissa, people were pregnant on the show. So yeah. it, it worked out. Melissa, you, you, you get a name. You get a desk. You know, you had this sort of progression in your role. Talk to me about that and how did it all unfold? Well, I felt so fortunate just to be a teeny part at the very beginning. I think I was staffer number two or number three. I can't remember, but um, I was one of the staffers and I was just happy to be part of the show because when I read the pilot, I thought this would be the best television show ever on television. And um, and then at one point, I remember Tim Busfield said, Allison and I had an exchange, our characters did. And he said, oh, you two are good together. I bet they're going to make you her assistant. And I was like, oh, I hope they make me her assistant because it would be so wonderful to get to work with her. And then slowly, I got a name, a first name. Then I got a desk. I don't think I got a last name until season five. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and, what a great, and what a great last name you finally were given. I know Fitzpatrick, <laughs> Fitzgerald, <laughs> and my mom's name is Carol, so it all it all worked out. And mom is Kenneth. and yet, and yet, yeah, even though right. your your dialogue was not heavy in the series, no. Mary gives you credit in the book as being. I think you said Mary like the captain or the glue, Definitely an integral an part of what kept everybody together. And I guess that materialized in this project. Yes, Alice and Jenny always jokes that on the show she was Melissa's boss, but in real life, Melissa's her boss. And, and it's true. Melissa is all our boss. We all look up to her. Oh, we all, we do. Mary. And the work she's doing so now, which you should talk about, the work she's doing with All Rise now, you know, after the West Wing ended, uh, we all stayed really close. Yeah. We are, re we're on a text chain. We all give each other a hard time all day. Yeah. We, and then we also send out the bat signal for, for different for service. service organizations or, or yeah. projects we're part of. Well, and may May I say that in the book, the way in which the book is is structured, it's like all the back of the house information you'd ever want to know about West Wing. And there are just tons of nuggets. Uh, what's what's the word I'm supposed to say? Easter eggs that are yeah. tucked into this book. It's fun to read. But additionally, not only do you learn all that, but there are service components. Help me tell this, Melissa. And I, and of course, I know Melissa, and I've known Melissa for a while, and I know her to be a service warrior. And I remember the work that you've done for soldiers and addiction and so forth. But in the book, everybody tells a service story. Well, that was critical. We never were going to write this book without that component. And because it's such an integral part of our relationships, all of us together, Martin Sheen certainly has been our leader in that and has set the tone. His march towards social justice has inspired all of us. So everybody got an origin story, which is how they came to the show. And everybody also got a service story because that was really what motivated us to spend the past five years writing this book is we wanted to highlight the issues and causes that we care about that need some sunshine. And also the reason that we're still so close, we believe is because we come together constantly to do service projects. And the work that I get to do now with All Rise, we advance justice system reform for individuals who are impacted by substance use and mental health disorders, promoting treatment and recovery support instead of incarceration. Martin Sheen got me involved in that work. I've been doing it for 10 years. Mary has been an advocate, like an incredible advocate, as has everybody else. And we keep coming back to do that kind of work. And we're just so fortunate to get well to i commend i commend you both for all of that and everyone else associated with the show who has provided such commitment and service to their communities the okay. fun stuff in the book perhaps the key episodes you had a lot to choose from not everything made the cut when i think of west of west wing i think of complicated but but very rewarding dialogue i think of president bartlett i do think of one particular speech slash dress down, a brow beating that he gave to an evangelical Christian who was also a broadcaster. Pardon me for this, it'll take 90 seconds. I oh. think it is season two, episode three, but can we all please relive this moment from West Wing? No, sir. Good. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. 
I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21.7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? While thinking about that, can I ask another? My chief of staff, Leo McGarry, insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35.2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police? Here's one that's really important, because we've got a lot of sports fans in this town. Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean. Leviticus 11.7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? One last thing. While you may be mistaking this for your monthly meeting of the ignorant, tight-ass club, in this building when the president stands, nobody sits. Come on, it gets no better than that. Mary McCormick, okay. question for you that preceded you in the series, but... How difficult is it to handle dialogue for Aaron Sorkin like that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, the dialogue is fast and and dense, and you had to sound like you were smart. You know, I mean, I spoke a lot of languages. Every time I opened the script, I was talking Three. language. Yeah, it was too much. I was <laughs> like, oh my Lord, it was a lot. But it's, and not everyone does it. And it's not, and sometimes the best actors yeah. I know aren't, Mm. Okay, Mary, Mary, if I can stick with this, like when you when you join the series and you you guys tell this in the book, you show up day one, the series is on fire and it's all a listers and you are surrounded by all of these recognizable faces. Not that you weren't yourself. You're very accomplished. But how intimidating would it be to walk onto that set and have to deliver complicated dialogue? It was terrifying. And my, the first episode I did, my first scene was with uh, Martin. It was in the Oval and it was Martin Sheen and Lily Tomlin and Anna. Lily Tomlin. Right. Hero, hero, hero. And Jeff was directing. It was the first time he was directing. So, and I, he was also a hero, personal hero. I mean, I was out of my mind nervous and I have a weird, I tell this story in the book, but I have a weird um, tick that happens if I get, anxious and one of my ears sort of clogs up and so I spend a lot of time trying to even them out like going you know like like as if you've been flying and so I did that a lot on that first day and then I realized I sounded like I had a drug problem so and I walked around yeah. like, and I walked around going I don't have a drug problem I don't have a I <laughs> Melissa <laughs> Melissa, there's a vignette in the book, and it's you after the series has ended, you're out doing God's work and you're with you're with Martin Sheen. I want you to tell the story, but he says something like, uh, you know, I didn't go to college. People who went to college, help me with this. Tell the story. Well, we were driving down to the the opening of the Institute of Peace in University of San Diego, and, and we were driving, so we were talking a lot. And he said, you know, I didn't go to college, but people who have gone to college always say that their college years were the best years of their lives. They just wish that they had appreciated it at the time. And he said, you know, West Wing, those were the best years of our lives, but we did appreciate it. And he's right. We did. We all, you know, we we felt and knew how lucky we were to have the friendships we had, the family we had. And we're so incredibly lucky that 25 years later, hmm. we are still tight. We are family. And we're just so blessed with that, really. I got a kick out of the fact, Mary McCormick, that Reggie Love, who was the body man, and by the way, President Bartlett had a hell of a body man. That's a whole story in, in and yeah. of itself. But but Reggie Love, who was President Obama's body man, apparently shares, and you put this in the book, that Obama was a huge fan. What, what were they, Betamax, VHS, DVD? I don't know, <laughs> but what, what, yeah, what I don't am know. I making reference to? So I, I was shooting In Plain Sight, which is a TV show I did for years in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, and um, soon to be President Obama was that the University of New Mexico give it a big rally. And my husband and I went, and as, as uh, the president or soon to be president was coming off the stage, it looked like he was coming in our direction. And I got so excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get to shake his hand. And so we line up and he's shaking hands, shaking hands. And he comes to, he gets to me and he looks up and he goes, oh, 
<laughs> you're, you're, you're. And I was like, I'm not, I'm really, I'm definitely not. I know nothing about national security, but you're about to be the leader of the free world. And it's a pleasure to meet you. And he, uh, Reggie Love told us after that, that he um, had just been watching the season seven, six yeah. uh, in the car, literally as he got out to yep. go up on stage. Come on. That is hysterical. And what, luckily, Barry's an... husband captured it, and it's in the book. You saw the photo in the book. I totally. Saw the sequence. Yeah, yep. saw the whole sequence. Hey, uh, well, one other observation, if I may, um, and, and I want to make this a Melissa question. It occurs to me, it's a show about the West Wing, i.e. the title of the book. It's about a presidential term, et cetera, et cetera. And you've got Martin Sheen, as you call him, the number one. I learned that as well in the book. Mm-hmm. But, but less is more. Like, he doesn't dominate every yeah. episode. He doesn't, certainly doesn't even appear in all the scenes. You know what I mean? It's just, it's kind of interesting how Sorkin used the presidential character. Will you say something about that? Yeah, well, it started off being a show really about the, the West Wing staffers and not about the president. The president would only appear infrequently. I think four episodes was what Martin had agreed to in the very beginning. And Martin says, and we we tell the story in our book, that in the very, you know, sort of the the last scene of, of the pilot where the, the camera pulls back in the oval and he said, ah, they're going to want to see more of what goes on in that office. And and sure enough, and also you have Martin Sheen. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. so he came and, be, and became a series regular and is in every single episode, but uh, almost every single episode. But um you know, I think I can't imagine the show differently, but I think that was the first concept that Aaron had. Uh, Mary McCormick, talk to me about the Martin Sheen role from your perspective as a co co uh, actor. I mean, what an honor! I mean, it's just I've, yeah. it's a complete honor yeah. to get to yeah. to do that with Martin um, and John Spencer too. Like yeah. it was to be able to be in a scene with those two legends was like a dream come true. I mean, really. And also Martin is, and just such a, like Melissa touched on, you know, he has, his life is is equally inspiring. Yeah. You know, the man he is, is equally inspiring. So to get to know him, to get to play with him, to get yeah. to learn from him, is has been uh, one of the privileges of my lifetime. Yeah, really. I really, I really, I won't give it all away. I promise. But I really appreciated at the end of the book when you talk about the final. What what's the lingo you would use when it's a person's last appearance in a series, like series call or some such thing? And oh, when and you're wrapped, when you're when wrapped, like a series wrap, a yeah, series wrap, wrapped. right? That's yeah. right. Okay. Yep. So, so he, like, everybody comes out because they want to watch him deliver, it, including Charlie Sheen, who I guess was doing, you know, two and a half men at that point. And, and it seems like it was a very emotional uh, moment. Oh, the whole, the, it was very emotional. I mean, the, you know, I, I, I couldn't watch actually the series finale until we started writing this book because it just would make me too sad. But it was an incredibly emotional night and we all stayed on on the set and stayed in our trailers till yeah. I think three in the morning. We just didn't want to leave. We didn't want it to be over. We And I don't know about you, but I didn't know that the family would continue the way that it has. And I thought, are we really going to lose this family? And luckily we haven't. And a large book, part of that is Martin. The book is great fun. Congra- <laughs> congratulations to you, Melissa Fitzgerald. Uh, oh, bye for now, Mary McCormick. I loved thanks. it, and the people thank who you. the oh, people who listen you. to my the people who listen to my program, they're going to love it too. So oh, well done, and thank you, for, Michael. Thank you for thank yeah. you for being here. Oh my See gosh, you guys. Thank you. For making time for us. Yeah, it was fun, 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 thank fun. You.